antenna. Uh, antenna's right on the top of that uh, uh, mountain over there, the big you see. Mountain? Yeah, okay. so we've got a line of sight path right to it. All right. So you can almost aim this thing right by sight. Once aligned, we attach the coax cables from the distribution center to the grounding blocks. You know, this thing looks a little flimsy for the roof here, I think with a wind load. Worried about that. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll come back and uh, put a heavier duty. Uh, do a, I can put a little do a platform base. Yeah, either that or I can put a little triangle mount in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that'll do it. This, even though this, I thought this was short enough, it would do it, but it's a little too long. Okay. Let's go get we'll the satellite dish. That. All right. Rich gets the job of preparing the cables. While I mount the mast, aligned with the slope of the roof. The mast contains a small bubble level to make it easy to get the mast perfectly vertical. I tighten the mast in place. I then set the approximate elevation on the dish for our latitude. Then mount the dish on the mast and tighten it down, but loose enough so we can still aim it. Then we do a preliminary azimuth alignment Back. using a signal level meter attached to the primary LNB. Oh, that's it. You're the right meter on. supplies the necessary power to the LNB. Okay. We're it. We then attach our four LNB cables from the multi-switch. Left and right hand channels from each LNB. We'll do a final alignment after the homeowner equipment is installed. You good with that? Yeah. Okay, well, right. I think that takes care of everything. Except uh, let's get the equipment installed in the panels downstairs and get the networks configured. Okay, well let's get all this stuff off the roof. I gotta go take a leak. <laughs>Hi Steve, how you doing? Good, how are you? Excellent. What happened to Eric? He had to go. Well, I hope you're going to finish up the panel today with us. We sure will. Okay, give me a little overview of what you're doing here. Well, we're just grouping the wires together by zones. Okay. And then we're going to land them on the panel itself, get that, get that going. Finish up the sensors first, then I hope you're going to do our A bus for us. That's right. Good, excellent. Hey, I meant to remind you that I need a um, Cat5 cable from the uh, HAI board for our line seizure. Uh, to the RJ31 that's on our voice module over here. Sure, sure. Because that's where our lines are coming in. All right. Okay. So Rich and I are going to try to finish these panels out today as okay. well. All right. So I'll we'll just be continue. keeping you company here. Great. I'll just finish this up for you. All right, Rich. Let's get uh, RF City. We'll star on the RF panel. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, S3 and S2. S3 and S2. We already mounted the main internal and external splitters. So we only need to mount the remaining intermediate internal and external splitters. We then mount the main external distribution amplifier. Okay, that gives you can follow along with the layout diagrams in the back of the workbook. Next comes the internal signal amplifier. Rich then starts from the bottom and mounts the satellite multi-switch then the four-channel camera modulator. With the modules mounted, Rich starts on connecting the external cable runs to the two eight-port external signal splitters. He then works on the internal cables to the four- and six-port internal signal combiners. We then connect the jumper cables we pre-made at the shop to interconnect the components. We'll connect the remaining cables from the satellite dish to the multi-switch inputs and connect the off-air and FM antenna cables to the F-connector terminating block. When the homeowner equipment is installed, we'll jumper the necessary outlet cables to the multi-switch outputs, off-air antenna, FM antenna, and so on. While Rich continues with the coax cables, I mount the router in the voice and data panel. Next, I install the two 8-port switches mounted on a common bracket over two of the data cable termination modules. This is a bit tricky. Then I start at the bottom and mount the power distribution module. Next in is a bracket to hold a camera web server. 
The server slips in and is clamped in place. With most of the equipment in, I install the main 15 volt power supply and connect it to the power distribution module. And then install the router power supply. We pre-made the power cables for the two switches in the office and connect them up to the distribution module. We also pre-made any other cables we could, including this power cable for the camera server. I then prepped the Cat5 part of the four camera cables to combine the power conductors and apply the connectors and plug them into the jack supplying regulated 12 volt DC. Rich and I begin installing the voice and data jumpers, first between the voice modules. These are commercially made Cat5 jumpers. Referring to our design drawings, we installed jumpers from the 4-port switch in the router to the two 8-port switches. Then from the camera server to the router switch. And from the wireless access point cable to the router. We then complete the remaining jumpers from the data outlets to the 8-port switches. Okay, that's the last one, right? After lunch, we need to connect the camera coax cables to the four video inputs on the camera server. We made up some BNC T adapters with BNC to RCA adapters on one side, so we can daisy chain the video signal through RCA cables from here over to the RF panel to connect the camera video to the four channel modulator. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, while Rich and I have been working away on the data and RF panels, Steve's been working away on DC3. He's finishing sorting out the security zones and connecting zone sensors, keypads, and alarms to the Omni screw terminals. Next, he punches down the Cat5 cables from the volume controls to the A-Bus audio distribution panel. The audio source cable will be punched down on the connector on the far left. Steve then connects an X10 Powerline interface module to the panel and plugs it in the power strip. Steve feeds me a Cat5 cable used to feed Voice Line 1 to the Omni panel for alarm line seizure. See if you need to test this thing, this little switch. This this will throw it into normal, bypassing the security panel. Right. If I throw that up, then it's in the circuit. Gotcha. He preps the cable and attaches it to the Omni panel. No friction. Post great. These are the RCA cables we mentioned earlier that feed the camera video from the camera server over to the modulator.